if we are going to talk about roots of quadratic equations, we are also going to talk about the types of the roots for each of the quadratic equations, or basically what we call also as the behavior that these roots are exhibiting. To solve for the behaviors or the types of roots, we could just actually just use one item in the quadratic formula. But I'm going to show it to you right now, a practice exercise here. So let us label this as A, okay? And then we are asked here to determine the value of the discriminant, okay? The discriminant is actually the item which could help us determine the types of roots or the behavior of the roots of the following or given quadratic equations. The discriminant will actually be referred on the coefficients A, B, and C coefficients of, the, of quadratic equations. As of the moment, with, uh, what, I, what items are presented here are already the A, B, and C coefficients of any quadratic equation in its standard form, okay? The discriminant is actually the radicand of the quadratic formula. The radicand, the items inside the square symbol, is actually the b squared minus 4 a and c. This is the discriminant. And using the values here, we could just simply get the value of the discriminant. Okay, so let's try to use number one. Number one here. With the a and b, a, b, c coefficients, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 3, and c equals to 2. You see the value of the discriminant. You have here b squared minus 4ac. We just simply need to substitute the values of a, b, and c coefficients in the given expression. So that would be 3 squared minus 4 is a constant times 1 times Two. This is actually one. Okay, and then simplify. Three squared is nine. Minus four times one is four times two is eight. So the value of the discriminant is actually equal to one. Okay, so this is the value of the discriminant. If we are, uh, as soon as we are finished with the rest of the, the items, we are going to talk about. Um, what are the types of roots now, or what are the behavior, or what is the behavior of the roots for the given quadratic equation with this a and b c coefficients? So let's have number two. Okay, number two with coefficients a equal to one, b equals to negative one, and c equal to one. Again, which let's shall use. The, the, the expression for a discriminant, b squared minus 4 a, sorry, a c. Simply substitute, b is negative 1 squared. That's 4 is still 4. a is negative 1. c is a positive 1. Simply simplify, negative 1 squared is 1. And then you have minus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 times another 1, which is also be negative 4. Double negative property tells us that we could add it. So 1 plus 4 will result to a value of 5. Okay, again, 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. This is the value now of the discriminant. Continuing to number 3, okay? So for this practice exercise, we are already given with the coefficients a, b, and c. Soon, we may actually be given with a quadratic equation. So let me just increase this area here first for more computations. Okay, so this is uh, the value for our uh, a, and b, c, a, b, and c coefficients. So again, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So this will actually be equal to b squared is negative 5, sorry, negative 5 squared, and then minus 4 times 2 times c, which is 0. And then you have here 25 
minus 4 times 2 is 8, but multi when we multiply the 0, will result to 0. So this is the value now of the discriminant. Let's have number 4. Number 4. All right. Okay. So for number 4, for b squared minus 4ac, a and c is equal to b is 0. Let me write it properly. 0 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 1. It is actually 0. And then we have 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Times negative 1 is positive 12, but we still have a negative sign here. Or in short, we have three negative signs here. This is still negative 12. So the result here for our discriminant is negative 12. Okay. And finally, for number 5, let's have number 5 here. And you have b squared minus 4ac which is actually equal to another zero squared minus four times negative two times eight. So that zero squared is still zero. Four, negative four times negative two is positive eight times eight, you have positive 64. And then the result is actually 64. So these are the values of the discriminant for each of the following quadratic equation that may have these coefficients here. Now, again, it's not part of the problem, but let's just share a little bit. We all know that the, the, the quadratic formula contains this expression, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, What is found in the radicand is your discriminant. Just for short analysis, if the value, let's say one, is substitute is the value of the discriminant here, we have a value of pos of square root of one. In short, we are expecting two roots. If we have five here, still positive five. If we have 25, still positive 25. Or even the number five, 64, we still have positive square root of, uh, of a number in short we will still have two different roots. However, for number four, specifically, the value of a discriminant b squared minus 4ac, which is actually the radicand here, is negative number. So if you will have a square root of a negative number, even if you will try it using calculators or any of the, of the um, um, you will also try to input it in your, um, again, calculators or any, uh, items which can measure it, this does not exist, which makes the whole thing does not exist. This means that the discriminant could actually tell us the number of roots and the type of roots that our quadratic equation has. So for numbers one, two, three, and five, all of them are positive value, then we can expect two possible roots here because we have positive, negative. But for negative values for the discriminant, this will make it undefined, this will make un uh, the whole value undefined. So sometimes we call it complex. We still have two complex, because uh, if we say about quadratic equations, we have x squared, so we have two roots, but the roots here are actually imaginary or complex numbers. That's why we cannot determine whether they are equal or not. What if we have here an expression or a discriminant? Let's say I will add here another number just for reference. Number, let's say a is equal to two. Uh, let's make it yeah two. You have here b is equal to four, and you have here c, which is equal to another two, just like that. Okay, what if it's like that? So our discriminant will become b squared minus four ac will be equal to four squared minus four times two times 2. 4 squared is 16. 4 times 2 is 8 times 2, another 16. So 16 minus 16 is 0. For this kind of problem, if the discriminant is 0, and when we substitute it in our quadratic formula, 
square root of zero is just zero. It's still a real number. However, the purpose of having two roots shared by the positive and negative here, since zero is neither positive nor negative, will be neutralized. That will be, we, we, are, we left now with negative b over 2a. So whatever would be the value of b and 2a in our quadratic formula, they will, we will have the same root. So in short, if the, the value of the discriminant are all positive, we will have two roots, two real roots. And probably an and I, I mean two real and unequal roots. For negative value for discriminant, we will have two complex, but we are not yet sure if they are real or an, or uh, they are equal or equal, unequal. So we can just simply say two complex roots. But if the value for discriminant is zero, we could expect that the two roots of the quadratic equations are still real, but they are equal. The next practice exercise will deal now with a quadratic equation in it may be in standard form or not. So further, we could actually verify further if the roots there are in the behavior of the roots there are either two real and unequal, two real but equal, or two complex numbers. So this is the purpose of the discriminant. We just need to determine whether the roots are equal, are actually real or not. So we are going to talk about this better when we have a quadratic equation examples later. See ya.